The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, to the end of the breach, do we go, dear friends? The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Every trading day that I'm here anyway. Uh, what do we have going on? Well, it's kind of a quiet day. Uh, getting ready to go into the uh, fund, uh, the Fed uh cycle uh, starting tomorrow with their meeting uh, on Wednesday. There is a, this one does have a dog and pony show starting at 2.30 on Wednesday. So don't expect a lot of uh, excitement until probably, uh, or even real direction until about 3.15 when it's normally over to 3.30. So we're going to have probably a quiet handful of days. Uh, volume certainly decreased. We didn't even get to 6 billion shares on Friday. So as we start the week, we've got uh, pretty much what we were looking at on Friday when I showed the options curve, and that is that um, probably an 80% chance of a little bit higher and a 20% chance of a lot lower. So the question is, do you want to be putting on uh, new positions? I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, I also don't see uh, any kind of reason to be uh, extremely bearish going through the next week. Maybe we get it. We certainly have light volume. Uh, but again, we if you have a big news event, you can have light volume for several days. Uh, the thing that you really have to be worried about as a bear is that it just hangs out here for a long time because, uh, you know, you get that sideways action. Uh, the overbought uh, condition can kind of uh, simmer away or take some time and consolidate. But again, the, the odds are that if it hangs up at the highs, that it's going to go retest the highs, probably break them. And the question is whether or not at that point you want to pull the trigger short. I just don't see a lot of good risk reward. As we start the day today, uh, 2895 on the SP cash. In fact, let me update that because it doesn't look like it was updating. Eh, 2894 uh, 2894.66 on the SP cash. Dow's up 58. The Nasdaq's up 64, almost 65. Russell's up 14. Uh, even one of some of the more conservative hosts today, like Jim Grant of Jim uh, Grant uh, Interest Rate Observer, uh, who's a, a guy that one of the few guys that seems like he understands what's going on. Um, his time horizons are a lot different than us. Even investor time frames, he's looking 10, 15 years down the line. So, uh, but he's saying that he thinks that uh, we're going to get a rate cut which I think is kind of interesting. And one of the few people out here that thinks so. And the question is, if we get one, the market I don't think is expecting it. I think they're expecting more jawboning. So if we get a rate cut, is the market going to be scared? Are they going to think that the Fed knows something that we don't know? And that's always the issue is the market does not always act the way that you think it should act. In fact, I wrote about that uh, today in the newsletter. Uh, there's something called the Keynes Beauty Contest, and it is uh, not betting on who you think is the best looking, but betting on who you think that everybody else thinks is the best looking. Uh, they did a big test, uh, I think it was public radio uh, on this, uh, did a big test with like hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, and they, they separated the hundreds and hundreds of people into two groups. One group was just say who is what you, this uh, cute animals, which one's the best looking? And then uh, they uh, did another test, and that test was we're going to give you some money if you pick 
who you think that everybody else thinks is the best looking. And it was basically a coin flip in the first one. I think half the people chose the dog, half the people chose the kitten. But when they were asked to find out or think about um, who other people thought that would be uh, the, uh, the cutest animal, 75% of uh, the people chose the kitten. And there lies the rub. We are not in the business of picking the best company. We're, picking, we're in the business of picking the best or worst, if you're short, company that everybody else thinks is great or bad. Not exactly what you would think. So uh, this is in the context of somebody asking me, uh, in the, one of my subscribers asking me about news and why it's so toxic to most traders. And that is that you have to put it through a filter of not whether it's good or bad, not whether or not it's the cutest animal, but how everybody else is going to think about it. And then, of course, you can go down the rabbit hole of, well, if they think that way, then I'll think the opposite way. And if they think that way, maybe they're really thinking the opposite way of the th way that they think they should. You, we've all seen that in the movies and television where, well, we've got to think that way, but that's exactly the way they think we're going to be. Uh, and it gets into that vicious, endless loop of I'm thinking they thinking that, so they, so I've got to think just that they're thinking that, and it's the opposite. And like I said, you just wind up into a spiral ball, go into the fetal position, and you don't know what to do. But well, at least in my opinion, the reason that news is toxic to most traders, it's not to me, but it took me a long time to figure out uh, that we're not in the right or wrong business. We're in the higher or lower business. And a lot of times, if you look at news, you're going to put your own biases into it, whether uh, that news is good or bad. I don't believe the way that whoever this politician said something, so therefore it's bad and it's bad for the market. That's not it. You have to dispassionately look at it, not only think about whether it's good or bad, because that good or bad probably will matter long down the, uh, down the line, but today, it's just like the Fed. Is that news good or bad if we get a rate cut? Will the market do just the opposite because it's not really looking for the most beautiful, but the, what everybody else thinks is the most beautiful? And would a rate cut actually turn everything around and scare everybody out of and the bejesus out of it? Or will the market just go to brand new highs thinking that, uh, well, my morphine IV drip is back on. And that's all I care about because we're all just crack addicts wanting that cheap money. Oh, that beautiful cheap money. Oh, those dollars, those simoleons. As long as they're cheap to rent, we're, we're more than glad to, to get them. So we'll see how that works out. And of course, it's going to be uh, 2 o'clock on Wednesday, and then, of course, 2.30, we see the dog, uh, dog and Pony show, and uh, Mr. Uh, Fed gets to go out there and do his dance on the catwalk. On the catwalk, he does a little dance on the catwalk. We'll be back after this. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the Taz Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the Taz Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the Taz Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we are back. We check in and see what the volume is so far today. It was figuring that it's going to be low. We're only doing about 3.3 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. If you're new to the show, please email me. I'll send you the link and you can watch the volumes. Uh, but uh, again, a lot of people will talk about volume and maybe it's just the floor traded at New York Stock Exchange or all the stocks on the NYSE. But uh, there are, I think, 23 different venues right now where you can trade stocks and they're all torn up into different things. Uh, but it's got it separated for tape A, B, and C. Uh, tape A and B are the NAS, or are the NYSE and the uh, uh, ARCA uh, uh, Amex. And then the uh, tape C is the NASDAQ, and you add them all up. But uh, they've got a nice spreadsheet, and I, it's just delayed 20 minutes. So it's not like uh, you're, you know, as long as you figure out, you know, by this time of day what's going on. Doesn't matter in the first couple of minutes, but uh, it gets you a good reading on it. What I put in the newsletter every day because it is one freely available, and two, the only one that's actually busted out. So you can see how much dark pool volume is each day. Right now, it's running about 38%, uh, which is actually fairly extensive when you think about it. Uh, when four tenths of the market is happening uh, with the men behind the curtain. You're not in Kansas, any, uh, Kansas anymore. And you can click your heels twice, but you're not going home either on that. Let's go ahead and uh, get a little history out of the way. We'll get into the rest of the uh, shoe. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1994, millions of Americans watched former football player and movie star O.J. Simpson Facing murder charges, drive his Ford Bronco through Los Angeles, followed by police. Uh, it ran almost eight hours. And I'm not one to start a conspiracy theory here, but that Ford Bronco uh, that uh, the baseball player friend of his had, uh, who I met like 10 years earlier than that, maybe 15 years earlier than that, uh, Al Coll Collins? I'll call him. Um, just to say hi. I think I met him in a bar or something. Uh, 
Uh, didn't even know who he was at the time. But uh, interestingly enough, saw him later. I thought it was kind of interesting that you see somebody on TV like that after you meet them. Uh, but uh, you know what? That thing was, the, if those Ford Broncos back then, I think it was like a 1980 Ford Bronco or something, those things were gas hogs. They got about five miles to the gallon. But this guy was able to drive for eight hours on a single tank of gas. I know they weren't driving fast, but the one thing I always wondered was, if I was driving like a truck like that, it would run out of gas at four hours. How did that guy get eight hours out of a tank of gas? Which is what I always worried about. Uh, everybody will remember where they were when JFK was assassinated, when uh, Bobby Kennedy was shot, where the space shuttle blew up uh, in 1986. I remember all those things. I remember where I was in 1994. I was standing in the CNN headquarters with all this stuff running live uh, as I was installing equipment uh, for an upgrade to the studio. And of course, how can you get anything done when that's on a, a big projection screen right next to you and everybody's doing stuff? But uh, I thought it was kind of interesting to be right there uh, at the news and uh, seeing it live, uh, why we installed the uh, installed equipment. I remember for two reasons, that and the fact that there was a Grateful Dead concert that apparently was running all week long at the uh, stadium, which is right next to CNN there in Atlanta. And I had to climb over a piles of uh, people sleeping in in everywhere uh, to get into the building. And every day I had to, you know, they didn't get up till about four in the afternoon. So I had to always clean through those and the, the deadheads. Never saw the dead, listened to the music. I thought it was okay. I don't understand the big deal. But uh, on this day in 1994, I know where I was and uh, where all the smelly deadhead folks were. Uh, okay, so what else do we have going on? <laughs> so I didn't see that. Seinfeld did a, a parody of the Bronco chase. Eh, you got to figure that that's got to be done. Um, got a couple of emails coming in here. Okay, I will send that link. Uh, to, to what else do we have? Somebody wants to look at Microsoft and say, is it making any kind of signals? We'll take a quick look. I guess we, we kind of have to look at Microsoft kind of like we look at, looked at uh, Apple for a long time and that now that it's the trillion dollar company, kind of no coming back from it. 134.24 was the June 11th high. You were looking at 26 and a half million shares today, uh, just under 8 million as we do this show. But again, if you're expecting the everybody to give up, uh, into the Fed, probably not. I would not be surprised uh, that we move down tomorrow 10 points after the open and close flat yet again. Uh, but the market has kind of held a gun to the head of the Fed for the last five years or so. If they do anything, the market actually tanks, uh, putting the blame squarely on them. Uh, I don't think I'd want to be in their seat getting all the blame and none of the glory which is kind of the way it's working right now. So maybe there's a lot of pressure on them to cut or at least be dovish. I don't know whether it's going to be, I, no one's expecting that they're going to raise. Uh, the question is, are they dovish enough to actually cut or are they just going to jawbone? Um, I think they kind of feel like they're pressured into cutting. So maybe they won't. Jim Grant from Jim uh, Grant's interest rate observer, one of the great thinkers on Wall Street, Again, uh, kind of a long-term kind of guy. Don't don't be trading on a weekly basis on what he says. Uh, but uh, he thinks that they're going to cut, which would be kind of interesting. And like I said, is everybody going to be shocked that they cut if they do? Are they going to be scared if they, if they cut, thinking that maybe they see something that we do not see? I don't think the market is betting on a cut right now. If it did. Uh, I would not be surprised to see that it, we go up and tag the highs uh, before they close on Wednesday. 
Uh, again, if there's some kind of news out, the market is kind of brittle. I don't see a lot of good risk reward. I've got some positions that we've been in for a while in the Tech Insider. But to me, if I'm trading for the next day or two or a week, um, I see a lot more risk than reward. Uh, and uh, I think I'm better off waiting for a clear and unambiguous signal before I put on some other positions. Of course, Friday, we go into options expiration. And uh, like I said, not much has changed on that. A little bit higher, very high probability. Low probability, a lot lower. We'll be back. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, Rich from Oregon, if you want to call in, I'd appreciate it. Um, just not, you know, you got 15 things staring at me. And uh, I need something flashing that actually says I've got a caller. I generally check that stuff at the break. And uh, if there's not something flashing, probably not looking down at it. So sorry about that. But if you call back in, uh, they are taking your call. Uh, what else do we have going on? We'll look at a few other stocks. Uh, XHB, the uh, 4 million share high on May 3rd, $41.58 
like I said, 4 million shares into it today with about 822,000 shares. So again, um, even in the last couple of days, we've got about 2 million. You're just up here at about uh, half of the volume. So the market is brittle, but it does not mean that it will break just yet. Uh, on a longer term scale, the Willis, was it Willis? Uh, Willis Group. I don't think that's right. We'll move on to that one. Uh, Winnebago. And that is the February 25th uh, t -t 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 high. 34.95, 1.33 million shares into it on Friday with uh, just 385,000 shares. And again, uh, 267,000 shares today. But again, no sign that these things are pulling back or turning down whatsoever. TPX, uh, Temper, uh, Sealy, Posture Pedic, uh, back into its highs from June 5th. That was 710,000 shares. This one actually looks fairly good, 500,000 shares so far today. So we could actually come into that with the same, at least the same volume we've seen before. Uh, Scott's miracle Grow finally getting back uh, into this huge gap down that took it back down to $57.96 on December 24th. Um, but, of course, this gap down that started it all goes back to July 30th of 2018, where it came down on about 4.9 million shares. Uh, okay. And do, 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 do. Okay. Well, I'm going to say you're going to hit 100. And at that point, you got to decide whether or not you think that there's a short opportunity in this. I continue to think that long term, this may be the big winner in the marijuana space. Uh, what else do we have? RTN, which is Raytheon. Eh, nothing new in that one. Uh, do, 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 Rite Aid Corporation. Now, uh, Quarvo. Uh, of course, uh, that whole space, well, you had the gap down from Thursday's Avago news. In fact, we'll look at the Avago next. Um, and just a little pullback into it. Uh, let's take a look. AVGO, see how this one's doing now after the big clubbing it took on Friday. Down with heavy volume of uh, a little over 10 million shares. Today, just uh, 2.6 million shares. But you're basically right around where you closed on that date. Um, $250.09 is that May 28th low, which is probably going to get tagged. Let's see what else do we have? Da, da, da. Uh, petroleum Resources. It's just testing this high $9 range, which has been resistance for many times. PTI. Just a bunch of these I haven't had a chance to go through yet today. Penny Mac Mortgage Investment Trust. Uh, that pins and needles. Personally, energy. Uh, speaking of the marijuana stocks and Bitcoin stocks, overstock.com. Uh, talk about a stock that went up on uh, fake news, and that was that they were going to be somehow the big Bitcoin uh, winner uh, because they were the only company accepting Bitcoins, got to $89.80 back on January 8th, 2018. It's done nothing but really go down since then. Um, I noticed that they're running new ads. And uh, this is the first time I've seen ads for this company. I'm going to say in multiple years. So I'm not exactly sure what that's all about. Uh, but they are running retail ads again. I don't see in that. Uh, to to O R N. See on that O N V O. We're gonna see what else is in here. Uh, MyGen M Y G N Myrid Genetics. Of course, we had a buyout in the biotech space today. Doesn't seem to do much for uh, Myrid Genetics. Take a quick look at the I B B. Uh, the buyout candidate was up 60% pre-market, which is generally put enough in here. You don't have a lot of juice, uh, but certainly if you're long IBB, 
I'd certainly look at 108 uh, as where this thing looks like it's going to go after the move today, if we get some volume in before the end. And again, one that's kind of been on the outs for a long time, and uh, generally after two or three years of having leadership in one sector of the economy uh, for stocks, you get a sector rotation. And my thought is that it's been in the woodshed so long that it's probably the number one candidate, biotech, by the way, is probably the number one candidate for a big run, even if the broad markets probably don't go very far. Uh, to, to what else do we have? Uh, mankind, M-N-K-D. And just moving along down the floor. Nothing new in that one. Let's see, Johnson Controls is JCI. Uh, it's back up against its previous high. This one actually had some fairly decent volume over the last few days as it's come up against its August 21st, 2018th high. So we're almost a year into the $40.07 high with uh, 9.6 million shares a couple of days ago. Yeah, you've had some volume, eh, 8.6 million shares. A little bit of a retrace out here today, but not much in the way of volume. ITB, which is the uh, home construction ETF, is going a little bit uh, there. This, this man just hanging at highs. And of course, probably de highly dependent on what the Fed says on Wednesday. So you probably want to keep this and some other ones up to date. Uh, hopefully we can get uh, Rich from Oregon to call back in the next segment. If not, we'll talk about AMD anyway. What else do we have? Uh, GMO. Uh, General Molly. I don't see anything new in that one. GDX. And, you know, we talked about just how light the volume was in the gold miners itself. You got a doji at here today. Uh, but 62 million shares from the February 20th high at $23.70. Again, 62 million shares. Of course, on Friday, you had 42 million shares. Uh, it did kind of get up there, went up almost three cents shy of that high. Uh, rotated back down, second doji out here today. Uh, certainly, I think uh, housing, gold, and everything uh, in those sectors probably needs to be your focus on Wednesday afternoon after the Fed. I don't think you're going to see a lot of movement between now and then. Be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in a tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What should you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we said we'd take a quick gander at AMAT, um, not AMAT, at AMD. So I'll type in the correct signal. Uh, is there anything exceedingly special going on at AMD? No, I think um, uh, there's a lot of discussion about AMD being very aggressive in their marketing. Um, but their margins are a great deal less than Intel's. And you can go back to Apple, 1986, 1987. Uh, the plan to license the operating system to other manufacturers that Steve Jobs was pushing is really got what got him thrown out of the business. And from Wall Street's perspective, all they got to do is hear that maybe you're going to have a, you're changing the business model and they want to get out. And I don't think that unless AMD can change uh, what they do and start getting their margins anywhere close to what Intel's does, uh, that it's a threat. Um, Apple makes 90% of all the money in the cell phone business. It is 13% of the cell phone business. That is kind of the same thing with Intel. It has a huge percentage of the business, not a small percentage like AMD or a smaller percentage. Uh, but at the same time, they have massive margins. There's only a handful of companies that continue to every month crank out 60, 70% margins, and Intel is one of them. AMD, I think the last time I looked, last quarter, I'm going to, I hate to even say, but I think it was around 35%. Uh, if you get a spreadsheet out, you'll see exactly what it means. So can AMD hurt Intel? The answer is possibly. Is the answer that AMD does so much better in the future? I don't know. Uh, everybody, I think that you've got a real problem in their video card business. Uh, the ray tracing games are really coming out. NVIDIA could really, really stick it to them. The other side of that coin is that uh, in 2020, Intel is coming out with video cards, and that may actually be something that's starting to hurt AMD right now. Markets tend to look six to nine months into the future, and if we're talking about Intel coming out with uh, video cards for Christmas, that may be a huge uh, issue for both uh, NVIDIA and AMD if they can hurt them uh, really where uh, the biggest uh, margins are. And that is they, they make okay margins on their, on their CPUs, but make no mistake, a great deal of what happened with AMD was their video cards. And that margin continues to fall all the time. And Intel will be coming out with its own video card line. They hired the chief uh, that, that quit from AMD. They've got a couple of people they've hired from uh, NVIDIA. Uh, and the scale that 
my, uh, that Intel can build, it is a problematic for both of these companies. Uh, <laughs> NVIDIA and AMD CEOs are cousins or something like that. Everybody is a cousin in Taiwan, by the way. Little did you know. <laughs> but uh, they all are. Everybody's related to everybody over there. Uh, remember that that whole island was basically deserted uh, before 1948 and Chai Kane, what was it? Uh, Chai Kane Sheikh? Sheikh Kai? Can't remember his name. The uh, the non-communists got run out and they went over there. But they, were, they started with not that many folk over there that left. Uh, I think a handful of millions uh, compared to the billion, even at, th at that time, I think, in China. So continue on. Franco Nevada. And I got to sneeze. And I'm back from sneezing. Uh, right back up at the top, 7882 uh, was the March 13th high uh, this year at 665,000 shares. Uh, hit it with 431,000 shares on the 7th, gave it up. Now it's back up. Uh, today, 331. Friday at 462. Um, you're, you're bucking up against those, but again, I'm going to say that most of these will move right after the Fed announcement and probably right after the press announcement. Uh, and then my guess is we're going to settle down and we're going to wait for the next shoe to drop, which is that uh, meeting between uh, the president of China, uh, the communist of China, and the uh, president of this United States. Uh, Fitbit, let's take a look at that. Uh, Chiang Kai Chucky, could be uh, Chiang uh, Ch uh, Chiang Kai Shek, right? That's what it was. Man, it's been a long time. That was 1948. That was uh, many years before my mother bored me. Uh, to do what else did we have? eBay. I haven't looked at that one for a while. eBay, uh, as I've said before, this thing keeps coming back up to the top, but it's been nothing. Uh, but a conduit for selling, uh, as one one guy on YouTube calls it, Chinese uh, equipment. Uh, and he, he, I've heard some very novel theories, but it seems to hold out, and it may be the truth. And that is that after everybody's supposed to knock off, uh, these guys in, that have already worked 12 hours will work another two hours and can continue uh, producing stuff. And then they'll drag it down to the market and sell it. Uh, so you end up with the, all this extra stuff going through eBay, which is actually products that are made after hours in a lot of these factories over in China. And this is actually how all those Chinese uh, that are getting paid kind of a uh, dollar a day kind of thing make their living. That is that, uh, oh, yeah, we're going home. We're going home in a minute. As soon as all the bosses leave, they fire everything up, start making stuff and sell it through eBay after hours. I, I don't know how I could prove it, but it sounded like a very interesting theory. Uh, eBay is testing the 17 million share March 1st high, $39.14. Uh, and uh, you got into it with like 9 million shares, but uh, again, no big reversals. And if I was going to say that I was looking at a stock that would be incredibly levered to the trade deals, I think it's eBay because as far as I can tell, half the stuff is from China on that website now. And it's not so much selling old stuff. It's how much stuff that you can get that apparently fell off the back of the truck. We all remember that story, right? Oh, yeah, it just... Fell off the back of the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the ticket. Electronic Arts, when we come back, maybe we'll look at a few other things.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And, okay, what else do we have? Um, do, 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 okay. Uh, somebody brought up Domino's this morning and uh, not doing much. A lot of these stocks are basically uh, coming out to the apex of a fairly long triangle like Domino's is. Um, you're probably going to get a fairly good pop uh, one way or the other uh, in the next few days because this thing is just going sideways. Of course, generally you don't uh, somewhere around the highs want to see a stock just going sideways, but it's not the uh, uh, coming out. Um, but uh, that would be it. Okay. What do we want? Oh, Disney. No, D-I-S, Disney. Um, had a big dog of a movie out this weekend. Not much happening there because of it, but it looks like a $200 million write-off for Men in Black whatever it is, three, four, Son of Men in Black, Men in Black, part four, part deuce, don't know. Uh, but it, kind of amazing that you can throw 200 million or 250 million away on a movie, and it really doesn't affect this, this company anymore. But I think it got like a 34, 30% on Rotten Tomatoes. So apparently it's a giant stinker of a movie. Uh, but... Uh, 
<laughs> okay, we've got guys in kind of light gray with uh, with bow ties. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the new thing. Not much going on out there. You certainly, uh, I don't want to be in Disney right here, but certainly looks like mid-122s is where you'd want to buy it if you get the opportunity on a pullback. But that's about it. Again, uh, all quiet on the Western Front, waiting for the Fed. And as soon as the Fed's over, then we're probably going to be looking at waiting for Mr. Zai, Z, and uh, President Umer numero one of the United States to meet on the 29th after that. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat channel.